episode 11 we're continuing our conversation from last time and it is um, about secondary trauma and accountability um, Amanda and I had a deep conversation last time and before we get into that she's gonna set it up um, we do want to just um, acknowledge the the time that we're in right now um, the time of what they're calling um, social distancing some people are calling it um, you know, physical distancing, some people calling it social solidarity. Um, we are in our homes or um, places. Some of us are not in our homes. Some of us are in shelters and prisons and <laughs> lots of different places. Some of us feel safe, some of us are not. Um, we are in places trying to be as safe as possible um, while this pandemic is happening. Um, and so we just wanted to acknowledge that, that this is a really rough time for so many people. Yes. Um, I know that this is a very high anxiety time for me right now. We have been in our home for about two and a half weeks now. Um, and I know as the, the HEAL project, we will be putting out um, some um, webinars, some videos um, to be talking about some stuff around sexual liberation, around some stuff around um, how to just kind of help each other out through this time and so we just wanted to acknowledge that before we get into our topic today about um secondary trauma and accountability and especially too about like as we're in the house for three and a half weeks and probably longer you know the conversations that we're going to continue to have and go deeper with especially in the close proximity you know we have the opportunity yeah. <laughs> many many opportunities to continue talking so um can you set it up just in case if um, some folks didn't see, um, you know, what we're talking about, just a little summary and then we get into today. So um, we did our last episode about secondary trauma and accountability. And if, I mean, if you don't know what that means, it's basically like, how did I experience trauma because of my mother's trauma? Um, from child sexual abuse, you know. So um, we talked about certain situations and everything. Um, so I wanted to continue because you said talk about certain situations, right? <laughs> I mean, I there were examples yes. of situations where I felt the trauma was coming out and the fear was coming out. So I walked away and thought about more and realized that there were, you know, other situations that I may say to you don't seem that big or it's not, you know, it's not a big deal or I brush it off, but you're saying that, no, you should, you know, bring it up and let's talk about it. So, yeah. so I mean, and especially now being an adult and then even years ago getting older, I understood why you did certain things, but I know you said you still like, oh, that doesn't make it right yet. Right, it doesn't, so. it doesn't. I mean, I, now you can understand now. Retrospect is great because it's a good teacher, and you can see things. But in that moment, when you were feeling it, like I know that you were feeling so probably upset and confused, and probably very angry with me about why I was, you know, like you were probably confused as to why I was thinking that you were manipulating me. Because one of the big things that came out of our conversation was this thing around manipulation, which is a huge thing for me. And that that my trauma was so intense that my own child crying made me feel that her emotions, um, her crying was, um, you know, her manipulating me. And so that carries out throughout um, for me. And so when she expressed that to me, that really hit me so hard. And she's like, as an adult, you know, saying, oh, I understand now. I get it. I get it. And I'm like, thank you for getting it. <laughs> and um, at the same time, I absolutely know that this has shaped a lot of the ways that you communicate 
and possibly how you express yourself with potential romantic partners and stuff. Like, I know that this has affected you. So it's not as simple as, oh, I get it now. I understand. Like, this has shaped you. Just like my trauma has shaped me, I know that this has shaped you in some way, shape, or form. So it's not that simple. Yes, I understand. Um, so there was, I mean, you know, like, I get like now in retrospect, I can kind of laugh about it. But so there was the that time when I was like maybe nine or so. And um, me and Katija were, were caught, like uh, my cousin and I were caught watching porn. Oh, yes, I remember <laughs> this. I remember so clearly. This. I was um, mm-hmm. sleeping over my grandparents' house. And that's when you had the old fashioned black cable box with the red letters and mm-hmm. It said enter if you went to like the pay-per-view channels and stuff. So um, my cousin and I came up with this plan to wait until everybody went to sleep because we had stumbled upon these channels. (laughs) So we waited till everybody went to sleep so we could watch and be like, you know, just being curious, just watching it. Um, But we forgot how to, you know, like cover our tracks basically. So on the cable box it showed that we were on one of those channels and my grandmother asked and asked and asked we both lied at first but then i felt bad about lying and i was like all right we were watching naked people on tv and she was like thank you for telling me and then i remember my cousin got in so much trouble and then i just remember being like oh man like what's gonna happen now this is pretty awkward and then you coming to the door, like, just sobbing, so, like, distraught, and I was like, Jesus, (laughs) I was like, what did I do, I was like, we literally, I was, I was just so, I was just like, what does this mean, why, why, well, at that time, why is she so mad at me, like, like, the way you looked, it was like, I broke your heart, I killed your dog in front of you, (laughs) And, like, it was, like, the worst thing I ever did. And I was just like, oh, my God. And then I remember I was, like, on punishment for the longest time. (laughs) It it felt like a a month or so. And I just couldn't go on the computer. I couldn't go outside. It was just all this stuff. And I was like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And then as and then I'm like as someone who's like a so sex positive and you give me all these books about body parts and also you know the very loud sex I've been hearing my whole life <laughs> so I'm curious you know sue me for being curious about what's happening because I'm like it's all innuendo for me I just hear right. it and I just don't know what's happening mm-hmm. and those soft core Skinamax films <laughs> are the worst there's that's not realistic in any form so i'm not you know like i'm curious i'm around nine or so the hormones are coming in right i had a a cousin who with her mental illness she has hypersexuality so she was way more curious and experimenting than i was so i mean we us being a year apart you know we were always together so i got a lot of the secondhand experience too so i remember just being like I don't get it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but you watch porn. Like, I don't. I don't. <laughs> and then especially, and then getting older and realizing like all the sex work and everything you've done, I'm like, what? And I was like, and in my head, I was just like, that's just my mom being a Libra. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, you're just being so sensitive. Everything is such a big deal. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, they're probably going to try to analyze it and figure out what happened, what made me want it. And I'm just like, <laughs> So I did not understand it. But now as an adult, you know, I understand why, especially considering who it was with. And, Mm -hmm. you know, so I get it now. But at the time I was just like, what the? And and it it made me feel like, you know, how like you always you basically taught me from a child that, you know, like parents are people, too. Mm -hmm. We make mistakes. We do this. We do that. So I was just like what how could like i was just so i'm let me just try to collect my thoughts because i had like so many thoughts i was like i don't understand like how this is like so devastating and i'm like what does this mean for me like mm. i don't understand i just i was really hey, confused you know it's funny because i clearly remember that and i'll never forget it it's like yesterday that that happened um because i was gonna say that that happened to me 
because I remember. <laughs> See. I remember it happened to me because mm -hmm. it was um, when when mommy told me that that happened, that y'all saw porn, my entire world collapsed. Like I know because it it was to me it was. Well, it it was it was like um, it well, was a trigger. Backstory: mm -hmm. the cousin that I'm referring to is my mom's abuser's child, mm -hmm. so that's why you know this added. Mm -hmm. So it, the 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 there was like the there was a trigger there because the pornography was involved, and that's a part of my sexual abuse, right? So that immediately was just like you were tarnished like you were exposed to something and it was like you were ruined like it was like your beautiful your your beautiful childlike mind was completely destroyed like 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 it it, it was to me it was like the the that the you that you were abused your brain was like just like it was just I was so distraught. I couldn't stop crying. I know. I couldn't stop crying. I was just like, you were just, it was just, it, it, you, it wouldn't, I couldn't take that out of your brain. And it was just like, oh my God, I just, I could not be consoled. And that's why I was just like, I couldn't even talk about it at that time. I couldn't talk about it because it was such a trigger um, for me that it was, the only thing that I could do was, um, talk to you about like um, that that was adult stuff that the computer was off limits and that you know you were you couldn't go outside because you went beyond something that it was age restriction that's all I could come up with because I couldn't go beyond now you know the language I had later on you know a couple of years later to talk more and you know in depth to you but then it was just like that's it it's over it's like like the the little girl that I was trying to raise, uh, you know, with these in a different way. You just got. I was filthy. <laughs> oh, no, you were filthy. How dare you? Were just, you were just put. All these horrible things were put into your mind. You know, like. You were just soiled, you know, soiled. And I was just like, I oh, was, my God. I was just curious because I'm like, it didn't. I mean, I know that because, of course, uh, everyone is curious. And it's a wonderful and beautiful thing, of course. And of it course. didn't sway me either way. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was still a kid. Right. I was still, you know, like, I mean, I still watch cartoons and color. and It's a, totally natural. I mean, it is absolutely natural. And. If I could, if I could turn back the hands of time, I would have absolutely dealt with that differently. I would have actually, if it would have been a trigger for me, probably would ask for help, talk to my therapist, or talk to a friend, um, centered myself and gotten myself out of that, dealt with my own trigger, and then um, made sure that I would talk to you to make sure that you know that that was a fantasy and that was not you know uh reality that that was something that people watch for fun um and then we could talk about what you know what people talk about in terms of what they want to do in, in bed you know different things uh, we could have had started a different conversation or something and yeah. talked about privacy and things like that you know it's so funny because like the way that your mind works and the way my mind works is so different like for you like we would have talked about this and about this and about that <laughs> and i'm like for me i was just like oh okay <laughs> what would you have rather i don't like i i would have just been like why were you watching that like like I know, like say for example, if mm -hmm. like I caught Joaquin watching porn, I'd be like, "Can you do that later?" Like, but you know, also, if you want to talk about stuff, we can talk about stuff because I know you probably have questions. Mm -hmm. I would kind of leave it more open because you're, you know, as a kid, you're embarrassed. You're mm -hmm. like, "Oh my god, I got caught. What do they think of me now?" Like, oh, absolutely, I agree. But I, I also, sorry. <laughs> I, um, I also wanted to just reiterate that it was completely consensual for us to watch this. We were mm -hmm. both sitting on separate couches. There was nothing happening. We were It was like if we were watching any other show. Mm -hmm. We were just curious because we saw a glimpse of it. And we were like, ooh, 
What's that? <laughs> but we know, like, oh, we can't watch it with their older sister because she would tell. <laughs> and we can't watch with the younger one because that's, he was like six. We're not going to do that. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> but yeah, it was, we were on separate couches, just watched it real quick, maybe like a half an hour or so. And then we were just like, it's more like to be like, you remember when we saw that thing? Mm -hmm. But it never like, in my head, I, it, I didn't have trouble with the distinction mm -hmm. of it not being real. Because for me personally, I'm like, if I see it on TV, well, as a kid, I was like, if it's on TV, it's not real. Mm -hmm. So I always had that in my head. And I'm like, oh, this, I know this is fake. Like, this doesn't happen in real life. Like, right, right. I was always just like cynical of it and like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but it was just watching the acts happening that right. was like, oh, so that's what happens. So mm -hmm. it was just a, it was a pure curiosity thing. But you see, like, it was over a decade after I watched that porn that I even started becoming a sexual being. So right, right. I was just like, all right, that's cool. Now I know, yeah. you know. And I know that It now. was so minor for me. Right. I know that now. And that moment, mm -mm, you couldn't tell me anything different. Because it was all about the trauma. It was all about that. It was, not, it was not even about this is totally normal. This is, you know, curiosity is okay. Um, they're just kids. This is not anything big. I made it bigger than what it was. I made it huge, you know, um, because I was terrified. And I thought it was like a gateway or something, you know. It's like you saw these things and now it's a gateway. <laughs> I mean, you know. I still get grossed out by naked bodies. So, you know, it didn't really, it didn't take me too bad. But I, um, yeah, it was just like, for me, it would have just been like, a, all right, well, you saw it, you know. Because I know, especially now, like, when I, when we watch certain shows with Joaquin and they might have a sex scene or they're kissing or something and I see him, like, tuning in, I'm just like, eventually, you know, he's going to ask about it or... You know, so I'm just going to be prepared for that. But I don't know, I'm not, like, nervous or anything about it. But I'm just curious about how these situations are going to come up mm -hmm. as he gets older. Like, what is going to be his first exposure to this? I wonder what it's going to, how he's going to react to this and how our conversation will go. Because, you know, like, um, I forgot what movie it was. He was trying to explain to his daughter what homosexuality was mm -hmm. like oh you know sometimes when you know like that whole thing and she was like i know what it is it's this is that and that and he was just like oh so you know children's capacity to understand things is you know we minimize it a lot yeah so it can really be simplified because in my head it was simple mm -hmm. um and in your head it was like all these equations uh, and stuff so i'm like oh it's it was so much bigger in my head <laughs> it was so much bigger i had to break it down it had to be like i had and i had to think about everything mm -hmm. i had to think about everything because it was because it was it was it was focused on my shit that's why <laughs> it wasn't even your little mind like i see naked bodies i was like ah <laughs> relationships this this everything because yeah, i'm know. like I'm like, the only naked body I've ever seen is yours. So mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's what other people's bodies look like? It was pure, just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like in a museum or something. No. Um, but yeah, but I mean, it, it was like shitty for all of us <laughs> after that. Because I'm like, my cousin got in so much goddamn trouble. She's Louise. So, mm -hmm. and then just like the dirty looks and the guilt and the like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because it, re it actually reminds me of um, the time and it, it doesn't have to do with like pornography or stuff like that but um, oh, actually it does well there's another time but this reminds me of when um, when my mom caught me and a cousin um, messing around like cousins do you know uh, and it was consensual to cousins I can't even remember how old we were but maybe even five or six or something <laughs> I don't even know we were playing house or something like that. And That's how it always probably starts. Probably naked somewhere under the bed or something. I think my father saw us and screamed for my mother to come get us. And, <laughs> oh, no. Um, and my mom, like, just spanked the, the crap out of me. I mean, 
And again, it's something I will never, ever forget. And it showed me very clearly, you know, like that. And that was about curiosity, too. Mm -hmm. Um, The curiosity, we were just like, and it wasn't like anything. It wasn't like really anything. It was just like we wanted to be naked, like for real. It was nothing, nothing more than just being naked. It felt really nice. (laughs) He saw us naked, called my mom, my mom and, and, you know, her mom grabbed us, beat the crap out of us. And it was just like, oh, this can never happen again. But what's wrong with that? Why why, why can't we do that? You know, and, and um, that stuck with me. I got the Mm. secondary trauma from that too, because growing up around mommy, it was always like, leave the door open. What are y'all doing? What's this? And like, even to the point where if I was in the bed with one of my cousins, like, the covers would be flipped off to see if we're doing something underneath. And I'm like, what? Like, Mm -hmm. so, you know, and as again, as a kid, I didn't understand that. I was like, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. Like what? No conversation though. There's nothing. It's just like, stop it. Don't do it. No context. No context. Yeah. I'm always like, why do I have to open the door? Like, or, (laughs) Oh, don't lock the door. And I'm like, what? I'm getting changed. Like I want to lock the door because I'm used to privacy. And then I go to my grandmother's house and it's a totally different story. So it's from no context to but all me, the context. Too much context. <laughs> <laughs> right. All of it. No much to do. So it's like getting to a place of like a middle ground to not not overwhelming and not like completely invisibilizing the thing, right? Um, so that we are having some sort of communication there and like not... Because I'm like, you know. always gave me information too. That's why I was like... I wasn't, it's like, especially curious, you know, because I'm like, I have all the information I need. Like, all right, I get the mechanics of it. Um, but yeah, so that was just uh, sometimes, you know, you are you just want to see the visuals. Like, mm-hmm. I get it. But yeah, that always, like now I can laugh about it like, my mom. <laughs> but when it happened, I was just like, holy shit. I was like, this <laughs> is the worst. I'm like, I, this was like worse than the quarantine now. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. Because at least now I have my smartphone. But during that quarantine. <laughs> that was the quarantine. That was the original quarantine. Yeah, that was with the Dell desktop computer. So I couldn't go on. No landline phone. Oh, it was man. horrible. Horrible Sorry, for a half an hour of some pasty people <laughs> doing ridiculous acts that I knew were ridiculous. I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> That's the PTSD and CSA, you know, the gift that keeps on giving. There it is. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's a little CSA joke. Yeah. <laughs> only for uh, only for CSA survivors. Yeah, inside only. <laughs> inside joke. Inside joke. But um, you know, it's good to look back on it now though, because then, you know, that's something that you can learn from and also I can learn from too, to you know, since I was yeah. the kid and now I'm the parent. Yeah. So yeah. I can always flip it and think about if I was in a situation, how would I react? Well, as what I assume, because you never know when you're actually in it. Yeah. You can always prepare and plan, but it happens, it happens. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you for sharing that, because it's, it's funny that the things that stick in our minds, because that sticks in my mind very clearly, too, because it's the day that your innocence was lost. For me, it's the day that your innocence was lost. <laughs> I'm telling you, I cried so much that day. Oh my god! I, I just swear. remember when you came to the door. I was just like, <laughs> "It's like here we go with the crying." I was so upset. I was like, <sighs> "I was like, this is never gonna end. This is never gonna end." I was like, "I kind of wish that I got my cousin's punishment." <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to get beat. <laughs> Like, just beat me. At least when the beating's done, it's done. See, and I would never. I was just, we're going to talk it out. We're going to talk it out and write an essay about it. (laughs) Yes. And I'm like, mom, no. But we're trying to find middle ground. Yeah. Accountability. (laughs) Well, this was definitely a lighter conversation than last time. But, you know, 
they're, they're going to be different conversations. And we, I guess we just wanted to show, you know, um, just, to, I guess, a taste of the journey that we're going to continue on um, having these conversations because I'm, I'm sure that there are plenty, plenty of these as Mandy continues to grow as a mother and to see her own son, you know, flourishing and then reflecting on her childhood because that's exactly what we do. We reflect on our own childhood and we learn from, you know, lessons like that. Um, and I see my own grandson grow um, and I am still healing on my journey. Um, and I want to continue to be a, a good parent. I don't care how old my daughter is. I am a parent and I'm going to continue to be a parent. Um, to her. Um, and so I, I am very like blessed. I feel very blessed that I get to do this, um, with her and that we get to talk about this and have, you know, difficult conversations and I laugh about the shit sometimes. <laughs> um, because in those moments, it's not funny. It's hard. It's really hard. And to laugh about it now, it feels good. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. <laughs> and also, I feel like with us sharing these stories, um, it'll open up, you know, your thinking to be like, oh, am I, have I done certain things or that maybe has mm. seemed small, but it had a big impact. So maybe it'll make you tread lightly, I guess, with how you do things and react to things because you never know like how that one thing will just stick in someone's brain and create waves after. So, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, just think, I guess to think more because I know for you, you were just like, ah, oh, and yeah. then I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it could prevent a situation. It could help a situation. So yeah, that's why storytelling is important. It is. And just keeping the lines of communication open. I just, and that's why I just keep on saying, I don't care how little it is because when you, when we talk about it, it's just those, it's just things just pop up. And it's a, there's always a connection to something. That's just always a connection, and it's just it's just good reflection, reflection. And thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you all for witnessing. You know, we really appreciate it, um, and thank you for continuing to support us. So, we will see you next time. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye.